A White House official tells CBS News that President Trump's daughter and senior aide Ivanka Trump is involved in the White House's outreach to members of Congress on gun policy. That official said Ivanka has, quote, trusted relationships on both sides of the aisle. Before she was making headlines in publications like the Washington Post, Ivanka Trump was making headlines in the New York Post. Tabloid is a new podcast from New York Magazine and Luminary Media. This season, it explores the evolution of someone who host Vanessa Gregoriadis calls the ultimate tabloid piece of candy. And Vanessa joins me now. Vanessa, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. So I just want to start off um, noting that it's interesting the, the way in which you were able to report out um, the information in this podcast, because you have a unique point of view. You actually sort of traveled in these same elite New York City social circles, right? Mm -hmm. And so you had a lot of access that maybe some other reporters wouldn't have been able to get, like Ivana Trump. You were yeah. able to talk to her. I mean, I grew up in Manhattan. I went to the same kind of prep yeah. schools that Ivanka went to, and I was going out to nightclubs in the 90s and 2000s when Ivanka was there. She was a model back then. Right. I remember that. And, you know, she would make the New York Post for dancing at a club to DMX or going to a fashion show, you know, thrown by a furrier. Like, this is the way that we knew her. She was going to clubs and she was fun and yeah. people liked her. So I took on this project, like, how do I square the person that we see now with the kind of fun-loving, cool girl that we all knew back then? And so, as part of this, we should say, you were not able to interview Ivanka directly for mm -hmm. this, but because you sort of had this similar sort of set of social circles, you were able to talk to Ivana Trump. And sure, tell yeah. us about that. What did I she have to say about her daughter? Yeah, I spoke with Ivana. I mean, she loves her kids, and she'll never say a bad word about yeah. any of them, right? I mean, that's kind of the Trump way, is they all just say, everything's perfect. It's always been perfect. Meanwhile, we know that Donald and Ivana went through one of the biggest, most public, most, you know, kind of upsetting divorces in New York history, and Ivanka was eight years old then. It really, you know, affected her deeply. And that's part of why, in some ways, she became much closer with her dad, which is such a strange occurrence for people who grew up with her. They're mm -hmm. like, wow, I can't believe it. Her mom was so great. Mm -hmm. Over time, she got drawn into her dad's world, always really wanted his love and affection. And how did that kind of coverage of that particularly painful time for her sort of affect maybe the way in which we see her now in this role as White House advisor when it comes to dealing with the press, for instance. Sure. I mean, it made her abhor the press. They were the people who were waiting outside her girls' school trying to take pictures of her, you know, putting things on the cover of tabloids with a big rip in the center of her, her dad and her mom. So she really learned that the only way to deal with the press is to be somebody fake, to always put forward an image that is not who you are. And that's the Ivanka Trump that you see today. We have no idea who she actually is. She's one of the most inauthentic, most non-genuine people in the cultural eye. I mean, I think that's part of why people have such uh, polarized feelings about her is that you're like looking at this person and going, oh my God, are you telling me anything that's true when she does interviews? You, you know? know, people listening who might support her might say, well, you know, it's one thing to say that she's inauthentic. It's another, though, for her to behave in such a way that is protective of her Absolutely. and her family. And you talk about this in Absolutely. the podcast. I think she's a really complicated person. I'm not here to say that she's devil incarnate. Mm -hmm. You know, she's just, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. She has all sorts of needs and wants and dreams that are completely legitimate. I just think her life has been shaped by her father, with whom she had a really bad relationship growing up, and who really has never given her love. And that's what people who grew up with her say. I mean, they say that, you know, in some ways the tragedy is this. She's not a bad person. It's just she's been shaped by him in a way that is you know, just not so salubrious, how, let's put it that way. Well, how difficult or easy was it to get people who know her and who knew her before her father's election to actually open up about her? It was incredibly easy to talk to people. I mean, mm -hmm. I think in New York society, up and down Park Avenue, everybody has a story mm -hmm. about the Trump family and everybody wants to tell it to a reporter. I mean, it's been open season. That's part mm -hmm. of the reason why there's leaks mm -hmm. all the time. And right? by the way, you know a lot of these and people I as well. And I know a lot of these people yeah. and they kind of 
like, trust me, but it, it's also just, I, I think that people feel like this is a historical moment and they need to say what they know to be true. Mm -hmm. Well, you also say in the podcast that Ivanka sees her family as the new sort of Kennedys, but that mm -hmm. she's not Jackie O, she's JFK. First of all, explain that a little bit and tell us about what you believe might be sort of the, the goal here ultimately for Ivanka Trump. Well, I think that, you know, Ivanka grew up with a fairly gauche father, right? But she was educated very well. She's always kind of wanted to be an aristocrat, and mm -hmm. she sees the Trumps as a dynasty. It's the Trump dynasty, just like the Kennedy dynasty. And she's not talking about Don Jr. and Eric. She's talking about herself. So I think there are some people who think, like, she would run in 2024 if her father wins again, if there aren't indictments coming down that would prohibit something like that. She can't run from New York, right? So she would have to run from Florida. But I could definitely see her moving to Palm Beach, running from Florida, maybe even just for Senate, I think she would have a huge base of support there. And actually, her friends that she's still in touch with are largely people that, that you know, have homes in Palm Beach and are kind of apolitical and more of the muddied class there. So I, I don't think that's out of the question. And, and so when you hear things like the fact that she is now uh, reaching out on the issue of gun control, that she is looking for ways in which to help on the policy front for her, uh, help her father's uh, administration, does that sort of square with that notion of the political ambition? Yeah, I mean, I think she wants her image to be unsullied. Now, there's really no way to do that at this point, but I think she also steps in at DEF CON 11 a lot of the time and tries to bring things back to normal. And she hasn't been that successful, but she has stepped in something like this with the gun control where she thinks she might be able to make a little bit of a difference. Now, is she talking to her dad about climate change? Probably not. Pro-choice issues? Probably not. But someplace where she sees there's a little bit of wiggle room, she might get in there. And, I, you know, I think that's great. I don't think she gets enough credit for that, to be honest. Hmm. Well, I listened to the first two episodes it was really fascinating thank to you. hear about that formative time uh, in her life. Vanessa Gregoriadis, Vanessa, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me.